After experiencing the most incredible sunset I have ever seen in my entire life, I then woke up to one of the most gorgeous sunrises I have ever seen before. Walking through the sand dunes while looking at the painted sky was kind of a reality check for me. I was actually here right now, in this moment, witnessing this. I wasn't sitting at my desk dreaming of places like this. I was actually here. And this wave of appreciation came over me, and I felt nothing but pure joy. Let me just take a moment to appreciate, not the fact that I'm wearing the same outfit, but <laughs> the fact that these sunrises and sunsets have been mind-blowing. Really glad it's been cloudy. Didn't think I would be appreciating that. Thank you, Death Valley. And this is how you get a lot of sand in your shoes. <laughs> Standing there watching the sunrise, while heavily debating rolling around in the sand, also made me think of all the people that have stood here before me. 1.14 million visitors came to Death Valley in 2021 alone. How many sunrises, sunsets, and moments happened on the same sand I was standing on? A unique set of choices and life circumstances is what brought each person to this park over the year and how lucky I was to be standing there experiencing a small part of it. I just always find it incredible how we all have our own unique stories, but are simultaneously able to enjoy these moments, creating a common ground. It's moments like these that tend to bring us together when we might otherwise have nothing in common. But I believe just about anyone can enjoy a beautiful sunrise at the start of the day. And that's all for Sappy Angie in the morning. I have a very strong urge to slide down the sand dune, <laughs> but I'm going to be taking a shower tomorrow, so maybe tomorrow morning could be fun. After getting rid of the sand, or as much of it as I could, I decided to check out the famous Devil's Golf Course. Devil's Golf Course is adjacent to Badwater Basin, but the salt here is anything but flat. But first, a quick rant about the name. Okay, so we made it to Devil's Golf Course. Um, <laughs> I just want to know how I got its name. Did somebody walk by and they're like, huh? a devil of a golf course <laughs> or was it more like if the devil were to create a golf course it would look like this because he's evil because <laughs> i'm not getting golf course from this <laughs> i'm thinking more my first theory that's a devil of a golf course but also who was thinking golf and got to name a national park money it's just weird as all Devil's Golf Course does sound pretty cool, but yeah, this thing is pretty wild. It also looks like a really great place to sprain or break your ankle, so. <laughs> After a quick Google search, I figured out that it was named Devil's Golf Course because only the devil could play golf on a rough terrain like this. So yeah, my rant still stands. Who thought golf course? Salt deposits were left as water evaporated from this valley years ago, just like the salt flats. But the difference is these salt pinnacles are massive. Some of them even rose to knee level on me, which is 20 inches tall of solid salt. Not my leg, the salt pinnacles. Are you thinking golf course when you look at this thing? I'm not. Um, salty mounds? I don't know. <laughs> When the valley floods, more salt is deposited and left behind as water evaporates and the elements do the rest of the carving of these strange salt structures. Water dissolves the other minerals and wind and water shape the remaining salt left behind into jagged peaks that you see today. It's actually really, really heavy. <laughs> well, not really, really heavy, just heavy, heavier than you think it would be for salt. Apparently on really hot days, you could hear it crackle and stuff because it's ever changing and shifting and stuff. So it's pretty cool. It was real tricky walking through this area. The salt was really tall 
and jagged, causing my foot to get caught as I tried to maneuver around the golf course. So maybe this site is better observed from the safe paved edge. Either way, it's definitely worth a quick stop if you're passing through the valley. All right, trying not to break an ankle. This thing is pretty perilous though. <laughs> It is crazy how tall they are though. They come up to like my knee or my thigh. And here is me trying to be a cool YouTuber and driving away from my camera. I know, I know. I didn't like it either, but I gave it a try. It won't happen again. Well, I would say Devil's Golf Course is worth a quick gander if you like salt or the devil. <laughs> This road was perilous. <laughs> Ugh. I really, really need to remember that I don't have four-wheel drive and I shouldn't be doing all this. My poor car. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. We made it. I would say if you're going to do a road trip like this, it might be worth not doing it <laughs> unless you have four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, or a bigger car. This is really hard. It's hard to find free campsites. Okay, I will rant about this later. Anyways, we are doing the natural bridge. And there's no one else here, except for these crows. Pretty cool view from up here. This is really, really pretty. Well, let's go check out the natural bridge, since we drove down this terrible road to get here. <laughs> The natural bridge hike is at the end of a long, bumpy dirt road that is pretty steep uphill. The park guide said it was fine for sedans, but I forgot how much the recent flooding affected the drainage of the dirt roads, and what was once okay for cars is no longer okay for cars. This is why you should be better than me and stop at the visitor center and talk to park rangers, who will give you up-to-date information on park roads and park conditions. Lesson learned. Anyways. I survived, so let's look at that arch. There isn't really an official trail to go see this bridge, but you follow the wash up the canyon until you see it. It's kind of hard to miss. This bridge is approximately 35 feet tall and 35 feet across, and it is stunning. This natural bridge was carved out of the canyon over time through water that changed its course as it descended down into the valley leaving behind a ring of untouched rock that still stands today. This bridge is quite thick and you can see the rock itself is quite bumpy. That is because it is rock alluvial deposit, which is rock, gravel, and sediment that washed at the base of the mountain and cemented together through precipitation and evaporation over time. And the runoff water from the mountain did the rest of the carving, like a Thanksgiving turkey. And voila, another sightseeing destination for humans fascinated by connecting rocks, like me. Well, we saw yet another arch. Very fun. The real question is, do I want to do another canyon? I don't know. It's fun, but it's crazy. I think we're going to go. Imagine water pouring down this thing. The natural bridge is not too far from the parking lot, and you can continue up the wash on yet another crazy hike. These canyon hikes were different from all the other hikes I have done before, because the sights along the way were the towering canyon walls, rather than a lookout point. It feels more like exploration this way, as you climb up towering dry fall, under massive boulders blocking the trail, I don't know, guys. I don't know. Might be time to turn back. Looking pretty rocky. And you are stopped in your tracks by yet another massive, unclimbable wall that forces you to turn back. Well, it looks like we reached the end anyways. Got another wall I can't climb. This one might actually be doable because I see like there's a little crevice that you can walk up, but coming down, I will die. So not today. 
It is much taller in person. The camera's deceiving you. Okay. Yeah, see kind of the vertical crevice you can walk up. This is starting to look like mortar. The gray and brown sharp rocks and no clear path made it feel like I was walking through Middle Earth. And the Lord of the Rings nerd in me was very excited to be here. And as usual, I had a harder time climbing down than I do climbing up. It was steeper and slipperier than how it looks on camera. Slipperier, there's that word again. But yes, I'm also dramatic. It keeps things exciting for me. I'm sorry. That was terrifying. I'm stress sweating so bad. Benefit of solo travel, nobody has to smell you. <laughs> Thank you for watching and subscribe to follow along for part four, The Storm.